Well, yes, the auto industry is going electric. The real question we should be asking is, how come we don't have flying cars yet? So fasten your seatbelt for a look at the world's most popular form of transportation. From Model T's to robots. Cars today all have sleek designs, come in a variety of colors and sizes, and are fully equipped with as many options and safety features as possible. However, that wasn't always the case. Introduced in the early 1900s by Henry Ford, the Model T is recognized as the first mass-produced vehicle marketed to the average American. The first Model Ts started selling for about $850 in 1909, which is the equivalent of around $24,000 today. By 1925, Ford was producing close to 2 million cars a year, bringing the retail price down to just under $300, or 4,000 of today's dollars. That's still way cheaper than any Ford car on the lot today. While, yes, the Model T was very basic, the Ford Motor Company aimed to create a car that was affordable for the average working American family, simple to operate and durable, and they succeeded. While the assembly line concept was not new, the Ford company created the first moving assembly line for cars. This allowed for a new Model T Ford to be produced every 15 minutes. Ford and the Model T played a big role in making the auto industry what it is today. Almost every car manufacturer uses the same assembly line methods to this day. Only now it's more efficient and robots are probably doing a lot of the work. Today, Ford can produce a new car about every 10 seconds. Car designs. Now, the first car designs were very basic. Cars were boxy and there were very few model options. While the Ford Motor Company continued to upgrade their vehicle designs, other car manufacturing companies were following suit. By the 1940s and 50s, most cars had taken on a new look. Cars now had a blended design with headlights and fenders shaped into a single uninterrupted form. The aim was to have an aerodynamic shape by introducing curves into the design. Ford, Chevrolet, Chrysler, and Dodge all had popular sedans on the market at the time. Some hobby mechanics would even customize their cars to give them a little more pep. Think Grease Lightning. This was an extension of the hot rod trend and opened the door to the muscle car era. Cars like the Camaro, Corvette, Pontiac GTO, or Shelby Mustang, among others. While the golden age of the muscle car started to fade in the 70s, today these types of vehicles are often featured at collector's shows and are highly sought after by enthusiasts. Over the course of the 1960s and 1970s, cars may have become less bulky compared to their predecessors, but by today's standards, they were still big, and they used a lot of gas. Nowadays, car styles have become much sleeker, losing their bulky size to better suit modern needs and preferences. Imagine trying to park a 70s-era four-door sedan in the small spaces that line mall parking lots today. The 1980s started to see the rise of economy cars, and smaller vehicles started to dominate the market. Forget about driving that boat on wheels, the cars of the day were transforming. Japanese automakers like Toyota and Honda were now starting to dominate the market with their smaller, more efficient vehicles like the Civic and Corolla. The focus was now being placed on mileage efficiency and the economic factor. The move away from big cars continued throughout the 1980s and 90s as more manufacturers aimed to create simpler designs with a focus on interior functionality and ergonomics. That was until the 2000s started introducing the styles and features we recognize today. With multiple designs, shapes, and styles on the market, the shift has turned towards offering more practical and sustainable models that will continue to serve us well into the future. Parts and Functions Today, the standard car is made up of around 30,000 individual parts. Now, we're not going to list them all, but let's highlight a few of the important ones. Take the steering wheel, for example. First introduced in 1894, steering wheels were originally made out of wooden circles connected to axles and were actually pretty hard to turn. However, this was an upgrade on its predecessor, the steering stick or tiller. It wouldn't be until the 1940s when power steering became the standard design in most mainstream vehicles, making use of hydraulics and electronics. 
Today, with the assistance of computer technology, hands-free driving is becoming increasingly more common. Park Assist is even standard on many cars today, allowing you to parallel park without even having to put your hands on the wheel. Will the cars of the future even have a steering wheel? Is it just a matter of time before the steering wheel meets the same fate as the steering tiller? Another thing we probably take for granted these days is starting the car. Easy, right? Just push the button. While a push start has become pretty much standard nowadays, most people at one time either had or still have a car that required you to put a key in the ignition and turn to start the car. Well, imagine having to put a crankshaft in the front of the car and use your muscles to crank it by hand to start your car. This was the initial starting mechanism for the Model T. There was definitely no remote starting your car from the comfort of your living room on a cold day back then. One of the most recent changes when it comes to car parts is the engine itself. The future is here, and the electric vehicle has arrived. The gas-powered engine is no longer the only option to power your vehicle. Electric engines are now becoming more and more common. Companies like Tesla jumped headfirst into the electric vehicle revolution, and now all major car manufacturers have an electric vehicle division. Car Features Over the Years We've come a long way since the first personal vehicles were introduced. So much so that there are whole generations who've never had to crank a window down by hand. Before 1960, all windows were hand cranked. That is, until electric windows became a popular feature in all vehicle designs, making it even easier to feel the wind in your hair on a road trip. Manual door locks is another feature that is no longer often seen in cars today. While keyless entry is pretty much standard in the auto industry today, locking and unlocking your car door was wasn't always as easy as pushing a button. Locks on the outside of the car door required a key to open, and once inside the car, there was a knob on the door frame to push down on, which locked the door. The one advantage to this was if you locked your keys in the car by accident, you could always try to find a wire coat hanger to slide between the window to unlock the door. Thinking about it today, having a cigarette lighter and ashtray built right into the dashboard seems like one of the oddest features ever to be found in cars. While it may be hard to picture, these were standard in most cars until the 1990s. Today, USB and charging ports have taken the place of the car lighter, much more useful on a road trip. And what would the perfect road trip be without a playlist to get your jam on? Prior to the 1970s, cars were equipped with a built-in radio, and usually only AM at that, meaning you couldn't listen to any kind of personal music. AM FM radios soon became the standard, and thankfully, the first cassette stereos were installed in the 1970s, allowing drivers to play their own mixtapes for the first time. These were soon replaced by the introduction of CD players in the 1980s. Today, most cars come equipped with Bluetooth technology that allows you to stream music from any device. And in some cases, services like Apple Music and Google Play come built in. Navigating the roads. The other quintessential step of any road trip is knowing where you're going. Nowadays, most major cities have highways that connect to other cities. However, there wasn't always a clear way to travel from point A to point B across the country because the roads weren't clearly defined. In 1956, the Interstate Highway Act was introduced, making long-distance travel much more accessible to everyone. Once an established road system was in place, the need for additional navigation tools became essential for drivers. That's when R.R. Donnelly & Sons created a division of cartographic services in 1967, producing some of the first mainstream printed roadmaps. This made it possible for drivers to travel further distances without fear of getting lost. For anyone who was ever the designated navigator on a road trip, you'll remember the struggle of unfolding the giant map to find the right exit. 
Maps were heavily relied on to reach your destination. That was until 1981, when Honda introduced the Electro Gyrocator Navigation Unit, which acted as a guidance system. This was an exciting new feature for cars, minimizing the need for paper maps by offering a very basic level of navigational assistance. It would later be displaced by the system we have all probably used at one point or another, GPS, or the Global Positioning System. First introduced in the 1990s, GPS completely changed the way we travel. GPS units were sold in stores and people would put them on their car's dashboard. GPS is now incorporated into many modern car designs. In 1996, MapQuest went online, eliminating the need to purchase paper maps altogether. The website made it possible for you to plan your trip ahead of time, creating a digital map of the best route that could be printed off at home before departing. Today, we most commonly use Google Maps on our phones for all our travel planning needs. First launched in 2005, this app changed the way people navigate in their cars, making digital mapping accessible on every device with the click of a single button. Becoming the most popular map app available, it is free for download in every app store and in many cases now comes pre-installed in your vehicle. Safety Features Now, once you know where you're going, it's important to stay safe while getting there. Or at least that's definitely the case nowadays. At one point, believe it or not, things we take for granted, such as seat belts, weren't mandatory. Most cars didn't even come with them. The first seat belt was invented in 1959 by Volvo, setting a new standard for safety in vehicles. These first seat belts were strictly lap belts at the time. The shoulder belt was only added in 1960. Today, every car comes equipped with seat belts, and there are laws in most places around the world that make their use mandatory. While the windshield wiper was invented shortly after the first windshield was put on a car, the first intermittent windshield wipers were introduced in 1969, making it easier to travel in all kinds of extreme weather. This would later be accompanied by anti-lock brakes in 1971, which were originally only intended for aircraft and motor motorcycles. This feature completely changed driving safety by minimizing the risk of skidding and loss of traction on the road. The late 80s then saw the addition of airbags, initially only included on the driver's side of the car because it was assumed they would take the brunt of an accident. It later became an industry standard to include airbags on both sides of the dashboard. Today, cars have multiple airbags to protect all passengers in the car. Cars keep getting safer, and we can say crash test dummies for that. No, not the band, actual crash test dummies. These stand-ins take all the punishment when car manufacturers test new vehicles. To make sure new car designs are roadworthy, they go through multiple crash tests to see how an impact affects the vehicle and its passengers. Cars today are much safer due to innovation, regulation, and those crash test dummies taking one for the team. Modern Cars there was a time when we couldn't even imagine gasoline-powered cars, let alone cars that drive themselves. Well, move over, combustion engine. The future of cars is electric. Every major car manufacturer currently offers some form of electric or hybrid vehicle. The gas-powered car will be a thing of the past and the not-so-distant future. We're starting to see more and more electric vehicles on the roads, and it's not just the compact sedans. Sports cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks are all ditching their gas tanks and going battery powered. Not only are cars going electric, but many companies are starting to develop self driving technology. In 2014, Tesla introduced their autopilot technology for the first time. This is the beginning of the self driving revolution, the future we were all promised. This was later followed by 4G Wi Fi hotspots being built into cars, which further opens us up to the possibility of AI technology on the road. Google even introduced their first self-driving car in 2020. So how long before we are all just passengers and no longer drivers? The question then becomes, where will these designs take us next? 
If the Jetsons taught us anything, it's that flying cars are part of the future. Well, the future is here, and the last time I checked, cars still had four wheels, and the only thing flying overhead are birds and airplanes. Thanks so much for watching. Your support goes a long way to help make these videos, so please subscribe and ring that notification bell.